I started coaching a long time ago, as you can tell by the top of my head. I've lost a lot of hair during those 40 plus years I've coached, but I want to give you a quick story. Uh, when I first started coaching, uh, you know, I played a couple years in the NFL. I thought that was going to be my passion. I thought I was going to be an NFL guy for a number of years. I ended up being, I was a quarterback. You probably thought I was an offensive lineman looking at me, but I'm a quarterback uh, by trade. So I started, uh, I got drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, played a couple years with them, then got traded to the Oakland Raiders, spent a year with them, and then came back after that, not knowing what I wanted to do. And so I got into coaching at my alma mater, which is Minot State University out in the western side of the state. I um, started out as an assistant football coach and assistant basketball coach. Dave, if you need somebody, I'll be right there with you. But I started out in that, in that capacity. After one year, and I'm still young, I, there was, I had some players that were older than I, but after one year, the head football coach decided he didn't want to be a football coach anymore. I became the head football coach. But I kept the title as assistant basketball coach. So that went on for a couple years, and I would, uh, you know, coach football through November, recruit a couple months, then I'd start basketball in January at a small school, small college uh, program. Well, this went on for about two years. Then in uh, the spring, or January of my third year, I think, I, in, this, uh, in this role, the head basketball coach got fired. I became the head basketball coach. Okay, so then I was head football, head basketball. Well, later on in that week or month that was going on, found out that the head basketball coach that got fired was also the head baseball coach. <laughs> I became the head baseball coach. So in one year, I was head football, head basketball, and head baseball coach one year in college. And so that got me going in, in, in football in, or in college sports. So. You know, NDSU is my sixth stop. I've been at uh, five previous schools, and I've had good players. I've had good players. NDSU is the best place I've coached at. And you can see here, uh, when you get up to this spot with the players I've had, I've been very fortunate. Um, when I got to NDSU, Carson Wentz was with us. And then it went to uh, Easton, then it went to Trey, and then it went to Cam, who's our current quarterback. But the thing that is special about NDSU in our football program is we're a player-driven program. Our players set the tempo for our team. These guys, and I'm gonna tell you, Carson taught Easton, Easton taught Trey, Trey taught Cam. We have a very rigorous schedule for our quarterbacks, and I'm gonna just talk about quarterback room, and I'll get into culture and leadership in that area in just a moment, but they taught each other they taught each other how to prepare. And this is going on, and this is something we started, and it's morphed into bigger things with these young men. Uh, Carson Wentz was the second overall pick in the draft back in 16. He was 22 and four as a starting quarterback for the Bison, okay? The next guy, well, I'm gonna go to Trey. Trey was the third overall pick in the draft a year ago or so. He'd still be playing for the Bison. This would be his senior year if he's still with us, but he's gonna be the starter for the 49ers this next year. But but Trey was 17-0 as a starting quarterback for us. The guy in between them, Easton Stick, was a fifth-round draft pick of the LA Chargers. He was 49-3 and as a starting quarterback. Now, they all have similar traits. They're attentive to detail. They're, they're so detailed. They're so meticulous in their preparation and how they led the team and how they became leaders through our program. And I think that's really important. Cam Miller's legacy is still being defined. He hasn't uh, finished playing yet, but he's got a good record to this point. So in this, in this point, I just want to talk about championship culture. These are things that we feel are very important to us in how we build our championship culture and how we've won nine out of the last 11 national championships at the FCS level. And this was started way back. This isn't something that was just discovered yesterday at NDSU football. We've had this in our program for a number of years, and you can see, and a couple of these things are really important to me, and I made mention of them. Uh, leaders create the culture. Leaders create the culture. The coaches reflect the players. Pressure versus stress. We highlight pressure versus stress. 
We're going to put our players in an enormous amount of pressure during the course of practice so there isn't a stress when we come on Saturday for games. So that's really important to us. The team, not the individual. The team, not the individual. And that's part of our culture. We're not going to have somebody, I'm going to talk from the quarterback standpoint, we're not going to, when I recruit a quarterback, we're not going to say to him, you're going to throw for 5,000. It's not going to happen in our, the way we do it. But you're going to be in a position to win football games. And I think that's the key part of what we're trying to accomplish in our, in our culture. Do not get bored with routine. Do not get bored with routine. Now, we as coaches are very routine driven. Monday through Friday, our guys know what they're going to do every day. It's no different. Every Monday is the same to our guys. Every Tuesday is the same. And our guys, our quarterbacks come in early in the a.m. every day of the week. We have a, a, a certain regiment that they go through in preparing themselves for the next game. But it's all done through leadership in that group and how they lead one another. The older guys lead and teach. And lastly, know your role, understand your role, and own your role. Those are parts of this championship culture that we feel is very important. And lastly, you can read at the bottom, compete and improve with urgency, passion and enthusiasm, consistently with a foxhole mentality to protect the team and what the program stands for. Now, we also talk in our program about levels of competitor. And this is really important to us. We start out with survivors. A lot of the first year guys, when they come in in the summer, we got about 30 first year players with us this summer. They're just surviving. You know, they're out there surviving. You know, they're still learning. They have no idea what's in store for them. They're just surviving. They're a survivor. The next step is a competitor. And what we're trying to do is bring those survivors into each phase here. And we feel by the time the fourth, fifth year rolls around, we can get to be a dominant competitor. And you can see we go competitor, true competitor, dominant competitor. And that's what we're trying to raise within our program, those type of players. Expectations and standard. The daily environment of Bison football is shaped by the worst behavior the leaders are willing to tolerate. I think that's really important. And that's what we feel in our program. The daily environment of Bison football is shaped by the worst behavior the leaders are willing to tolerate. You know, we embrace expectations and we have goals and objectives that we, we go over every couple weeks. We go over our offensive goals, our defensive goals, our special team, whatever it is. We go over it with our team and team meetings and it's talked about. There's a lot of things that make us different than our opponents, but I think the biggest one is, is pressure versus stress. And I think that's one thing that we try to highlight. Uh, sustaining success, cultivating leadership. Athletes have three needs. They have three needs in our program. They want someone to believe in them. Someone to believe in them. Belief in a, in a system, have a system that they believe in. And then finally, belong to a community. And I think that's really important. And that's what we try to build. You know, we'll have a, when we start in August, we'll have 120 players and we're trying to build a community amongst those 120 players and, and then the additional coaches and staff. I'll go back to this last slide. Um, we don't use the term grind in our program. We don't use that term. Um, we wanna focus in on the positive stuff that we do. So in, in trying to what we do here, we go right now means everything. And, and you can see that we, we put it on all of our, it's a, it's a tag that we put on all of our shirts, anything that our guys wear. And it talks about cannot control the outcome, control effort, focus and attitude, have a sense of urgency. I have a young freshman quarterback, first year quarterback. I told him the last two weeks, I've been meeting with him individually. I said, you have to have a sense of urgency. Every time you go out, you have, that, have to have a sense of urgency that you're gonna be competitive with anybody you're doing a drill with. And, and that's what I'm trying to get him to do and to, to raise his level of play. Um, eliminate excuses. You will not hear us from a coaching staff ever put a, an excuse of an injured player not playing and us losing a game. We're never gonna do that in Bison football. It's something that is part of our culture 
and it's not gonna be something we tolerate in our program. Lastly, trust the process. We feel football in our season is a process. And if we can work from August all the way to December into January, that is a process for us. So be a process-driven organization, and that's what we try to be. Trust your now. Process-driven teams don't fear game day. You know, and like I said, we're routine-driven, so every Monday they know what they're doing all the way through Friday. Every one of our players has a part of the process in what they do, and we try to, we try to keep them very informed on how that process is gonna work. So that is kind of what my talk is at. I really appreciate the opportunity to come and speak to you, and go Bison. Woo! <laughs>